one of the unique things in North Dakota is that the North, Bank of North Dakota does several different things. One of them is direct lending. But another thing that it does is it, it acts like a mini federal reserve for banks in North Dakota. So banks, like any business, have to have sort of a capital reserve. They have to have access to credit, too. There's a requirement that they need to keep 10% of their loan portfolio in cash reserves. So if their cash reserves dips, they can go to the Bank of North Dakota, which gives them a loan to float them through the, their dip. So interestingly, in North Dakota, they've had no bank failures since this banking crisis started. Whereas Washington, we're up to about uh, 16 now, I think. And they're generally community banks that fail. You know, we've had some notable exceptions, big banks, but uh, generally the community banks that are the ones that are in trouble. Community banks are the ones who do most of the lending to the small business owners uh, because they know their customers. They know if you're good for uh, the credit, uh, whether your business looks like it's got a good business plan, that sort of thing. They know the community that they're lending within. So it's important to support the community banks. In North Dakota, North Dakota has the most diversified banking system in the country. So by diversified, that is to say that they don't have the monolithic banks of America as well as Fargo's that come up come in and suck up all the depositors, leaving the crumbs for the community banks. Um, the community banks and the Bank of North Dakota work synergistically to support the banking and lending community throughout the state. So they have, that's another one. Of, North Dakota has a number of firsts, and that's one of them, and a very important one that's often overlooked is that they have the most diversified banking system in the country. So they have the most numbers of branches per uh, person in, in, of any state. Um, and a smart government, smart use of taxpayers' money, really smart government in more ways than you would think. Uh, right now, the state does have a lot of different lending programs out there, the Public Works Trust Fund, the Housing Trust Fund, all of these different lending programs that are funded by different agencies, uh, separate from state government or within state government. So if we can consolidate all of those different agencies under a single administration, it makes for a lot of efficiency. So this is really, when you're talking about reforming government, for a lot of people, reform just is code for cutting government. See, I don't, and to me that's not, the purpose of government is to make sure that we the people control our own destinies and we are speaking for ourselves through our representatives to create the type of society we want to see. You have to have a structure and a government to be able to do that. Uh, to just say, we got to cut, 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 uh, doesn't do anything but benefit those who have the power to make sure that they are the winners after the cuts. So we need to make sure that reform, and this is true government reform, if you want to talk about reform, this is progressive reform that really advances the cause for the people. So it is smart government and smart reform. So I have a little four minute um, video if you don't mind my watching. The state of North Dakota is in the banking business. That's what the uh, Bank of North Dakota does, and it's one of the biggest banks in the country. It has sits at $2 billion. And some say the biggest bank between Minneapolis and Seattle, and it's something that has served the needs of North Dakota quite well. And that actually, most North Dakota, they're very, very proud of it. Our state is growing. We're getting, I think, uh, exciting new businesses and, and new business opportunities. Uh, we want to grow our state's economy. We want to diversify our state's economy, and the bank's part of that and grows with it. Thank you. My view of banks is that they are to lend money to people, whether it's to start a business, to buy or expand their farm or ranch, to buy a home, to get a school, whatever it is, that a bank is successful if it does a good job of lending in its community. That helps the community grow and prosper. That's what makes the bank grow and prosper. So that, I mean, that's my philosophy of banking, I guess. The opponents of a state-owned bank did everything they could possibly do to stop it from being established. They took two challenges to the United States Supreme Court 
And the United States Supreme Court said, the citizens of the state want to do this, they should be able to do it. And then there's a drought in the 1920s. And these farmers just had to see that dream turn sour when they couldn't pay not only the principal, but the interest on the loan that they had with the bank. And people would write notes to the bank on a torn sheet of paper. I would send it to you, but I don't have any. We don't have a crop. I haven't had a crop this year. I didn't have a crop last year. They didn't have money to even feed themselves, much less to pay a bank loan. The bank tried to collect the money the Bank of North Dakota representative would just say, I, I can't take money from these people, they don't have any. And it became very clear in the early 30s, and this is when, when Bill Langer was governor, and Bill Langer created a, a moratorium on debt. So the bank stopped doing any kind of foreclosure, and then allowed them to stay on the farms, when the economy turned around in the early 1940s, the banks sold those farms back to the original farmer at the price the bank had in them. The Bank of North Dakota is doing amazingly well given the worldwide economic crisis that we're in. It's as strong as it's ever been. The fact that it isn't suffering any of the fallout from the financial crisis that the other banks are, I think attests to really the strength of the bank and actually the bank's mission. And they didn't invest in risky derivatives. They didn't buy any subprime home loans, but it didn't fit the way that they did business. During the last 90 years, the bank has returned a half a billion dollars to the state's general fund. What that means is the state has been able to develop programs, half a billion dollars worth of programs, without taxing the people of the state to do those programs. It really, in my mind, it doesn't matter if it's socialism or capitalism. You know, what matters is what works best for the people, what provides the most services <laughs> at the least cost. What's interesting to me was the ability of the bank to act as a heat sink during the economic depression to absorb the capital crunch that the people were going through. And then once the economy got back on its feet again, it sold those properties back to the same people for the amount that they had in it. I mean, that's, that's a, a wonderful way of how a public bank should work.